So now to one of the most remote and pristine places on the planet and a battle brewing over oil. With the story, here's NBC's Ann Curry. Deep in Ecuador's lush Amazon rainforest, the most biodiverse place on Earth, the rarely seen Rwani tribes are sharpening their spears and preparing their blowguns to fight Ecuador's new plan to auction as much as 8 million acres of the rainforest for oil drilling. A tribal leader sings, we are not going to lose our culture, we are going to protect our land. Boston University biology professor Kelly Swing has come to know the riches of this rainforest after researching here for more than 20 years. There may be one-tenth of all the species on the planet right here in this space that's like the size of South Carolina. He's also come to know Rwani tribesmen, who he says will fight to the death to protect this land. And he says America, a top importer of oil from Ecuador, shares responsibility for this coming conflict. We're definitely guilty in, in this story. And the toxic legacy of past oil drilling in other parts of the rainforest. It smells pretty bad. Well, I understand that more oil has been spilled here than in the Exxon Valdez disaster in Alaska. Yeah, those numbers are real. We're talking about hundreds of small spills that add up to a, a huge amount. Hola. Hola, how are you? Another tribe, the Quechua, has been told to expect oil operations to begin at any time. Angry Quechua women say they will fight with their men because they believe their purpose in life is to save the forest. Patricia Hupa, a tribal leader and shaman healer. My grandfather protected this land. And after this, my, my father said to me, oh, you need to protect. If, if I am living, I'm going to fight my community. As long as you're alive, you're yes. going to fight for your community. Mm. You feel so strongly. Yes. I'm sorry. He sees no difference between the survival of the forest and the survival of his people. The drilling is being ordered by the government of Ecuador, which depends on Amazon oil for up to 50 percent of its revenues. Ecuador's vice president, Lenin Moreno. If Ecuador were in a position to provide for all of the needs of its people, we would be happy not to exploit. However, that is not the case. So if confronted with indigenous people with spears, would Ecuador use force? According to international law, if dialogue fails, there is a process of escalation of the use of force. In this battle of blowguns against bulldozers, the Quechua and Wawani are clearly outmatched. Perhaps one reason why Professor Kelly Swing says this is about more than saving the rainforest. I definitely see this as a human rights issue. I think it's very sad to say that most human rights issues don't really come to be recognized as human rights issues until people start to die. Ann Curry, NBC News, Ecuador. And you can see more of Ann's report from the rainforest tonight on Rock Center with Brian Williams at 10, 9 central time right here on NBC.